Cleveland series on Fox is presented by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. A long season of baseball ends here tonight with one game to determine which of these two teams will be world champions. Kurt Schilling preparing to face the Yankees in this starting lineup for New York brought to you by Budweiser. Derek Jeter will lead off. He's the shortstop. Paul O'Neill batting second in right field. Then it's Bernie Williams in center. Tina Martinez cleans up. Jorge Posada is batting fifth. Shane Spencer in left. Alfonso Soriano's had a good series. He hits seventh. Scott Brosius bats eighth. He's the third baseman. Roger Clemens two out of 16 lifetime swing of the bat pitching and batting ninth. On the mound for the second time in this World Series, pitching on three days rest, and for the second time in his big league career, right hander Kurt Schilling. He has worked seven innings in each game against the Yankees, games one and four. His postseason record, 4 0. Stamina and arm strength because of three days rest will stay. Home runs, he's given up 37, but 31 were solo shots. The only home run that the Yankees had against Schilling a solo shot. The Yankees can look for shoulder high heat and shoe high splitters. This guy lengthens the strike zone. And when the Yankees put the ball in play defensively this group backs up Kurt Schilling again number one in the National League defensively committing only 84 errors during the regular season. They have Gonzalez Finley and Batista who makes the start here in game seven after a big game six. He's in right with Williams, Womack, Council, and Grace. The catcher is Damian Miller. And then it's Kurt Schilling, the 22 game winner during the regular season on the mound. This broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Kurt Schilling who last night guaranteed a victory saying we're going to win the man who will lead it off against him Derek Jeter said the only thing I'll guarantee is I guarantee it will be fun Schilling and Clemens Arizona and New York game seven first pitch strike one ninety four miles per hour on the hands of Derek Jeter where the Diamondback pitchers have lived Games one through seven now. Randy Johnson is available for relief work tonight if needed. One ball, one strike. If Randy Johnson is in the game, he will have that starter's mentality, and it will probably be late. Eighth, ninth inning, says Bob Brennan. Giving him time to warm up as though he were a starter. 95 miles per hour, but Schilling juiced up, missing with the last two up and out of the strike zone, two and one. Jeter, last year's MVP during the World Series, is not going to repeat in that category. Only three out of 23 with one RBI. But it was the game winning home run in game four. Strike two. You will be seeing that all night as you look at the numbers on Derek Jeter. Foul balls the other way by Yankee hitters. Ball on top of them by Kurt Schilling, particularly that high fastball. Got it. That smile from Jeter as he walks away after watching a 97 mile an hour pitch nail the outside corner. After trying to come inside four times, the fastball away gets Jeter. Talking to Gary Denbo, his hitting instructor, as Jeter is now three out of 24. Here's Paul O'Neill playing 
most likely and again he has never really made it official but he has said that he is leaning toward retirement at the end of the season playing in his final game in the big leagues takes a ball O'Neill coming to the Yankees in 1993 batting in front of Bernie Williams. A 1 0 pitch into right center field. That ball will not be caught, and it'll go all the way to the wall. Paul O'Neill will turn it on and go for three. The throw over. O'Neill out, two away. In our opening, we said the Yankees went 54 innings without getting a runner to third base with less than two outs. O'Neill tries it. Watch the throw by Craig Council. On the money, Paul O'Neill there. Nailed at third base. Fine relay by Batista and Council to get O'Neill. Play went 9 4 5, and now a strike to Bernie Williams. Williams, 5 out of 20 in this World Series, was 2 out of 6 prior at bats against Kurt Schilling in this World Series. Breaking ball misses, one ball, one strike. With nobody out or two outs, that would have been a bad play by Paul O'Neill. But he was looking for a bad throw by either Batista or Council, and he didn't get it. But in my view, it was a good try by O'Neill, particularly with the Yankees not getting runners to third base and trying to score a cheap run early. Two balls and a strike on Bernie Williams. Base is clear, two out. Two and two. Easy into center for Finley. A hit and nobody left. The hit by O'Neill. Tried to push it to third. Batista. Council. Williams. One half inning, game seven. No score. When Kurt Schilling was interviewed last night, after the Diamondback victory, he was asked, how do you feel? He said, I feel like a world champion. We're only nine innings away. Walking off after the top of the first, you can read his lips saying, that's one. One inning tucked under his belt. He sits on the bench and watches Roger Clemens face the Diamondbacks in their lineup brought to you by Budweiser. Tony Womack will lead off. He's the shortstop. Craig Council batting second. Luis Gonzalez hitting third. Matt Williams. Had a big night last night. He cleans up. Then it's Steve Finley, Danny Batista, Mark Grace, Damian Miller batting eight, and Kurt Schilling pitching and batting ninth. Roger Clemens was the first pitcher in Major League history to go 20 and 1. The Yankees are hopeful that he's the last pitcher in 2001 to go 1 and 0. Womack takes a strike over the outside corner. The numbers for Womack, and isn't it amazing? But it is definitely the case with Roger Clemens, a five time Cy Young Award winner, who is still asked to prove himself on the big stage. He did so in game three with the Yankees down two games to none. He and Rivera hooked up for a two to one victory at Yankee Stadium. Now, in what could be a defining start for him in a Yankee uniform, he pitches in the bottom of the first inning with no score in game seven. 
Strike two on Walmart. Our scouting report includes what Joe was talking about. Big game pitcher, he proved that in game three. Bunt and run, I think the Diamondbacks will try to do that. Bunt to get on, run when they do. Rocket, meet the Bob, his first time pitching here in Phoenix. Womack pops it up. Out is Jeter and is Williams. Bernie Williams takes care of it, one away. We talked about how good the Arizona defense was during the regular season. We got a glimpse of it in the top of this first inning. Now the defense for the Yankees with Spencer Williams and O'Neill in the outfield left to right. On the infield, Brocious, Jeter, Soriano, and Tino Martinez in a battery of Jorge Posada and Roger Clemens. The Yankees have not played good defense in the games played in this World Series here in Phoenix. No, they have not. One of the reasons they're 0-3 here in Phoenix. Here's Craig Council. That misses for ball one. This is one of those rare games where I think the outfield defense will come into play for both teams more than the infield defense because both pitchers are fly ball pitchers. And this is a cavernous outfield. Right. It's about as big as it gets in the big leagues with the different nooks and crannies along the outfield wall. Left center field 413 feet away. See that yellow stripe it goes high on the wall out in center field you have to get it over that stripe to get it out of here for a home run. Odd caroms. Here's a 1 1. Council to the right side fair ball knocked down by Martinez base hit. One on one out in the first inning for Arizona. Tino Martinez overruns the ball it hits the heel of his glove and now in foul territory Clemens tries to win the race to the bag had he held on Council could have been out just fair Martinez knocks it down the shovel pass could have been in time. I think Council may have had something to do. He may have clipped Roger Clemens we'll see. Nope, Clemens just dropped it. Had he held on, he's out. And as a result, they're going to give an error to Tino Martinez going to his left. Couldn't come up with it cleanly. And now Luis Gonzalez will bat one on, one out. So already we talk about the defense. Certainly not in the category of a routine or an easy play for Tino Martinez going to his left, crossing into foul territory. But on the first hit of the game, they are going to make it clean. And the error puts a man on with one out in the bottom of the first inning for Luis Gonzalez. In football, I hear John Madden talking about a linebacker who over pursues. Tino Martinez over pursued on that ground ball and hit the heel of the glove, an error, and a rare one on Tino. One on one out Luis Gonzalez. That's foul. Gonzalez so far in this series six out of twenty two. Had three hits in last night's game and his final three at bats before leaving. And bothered by a strained left hamstring and. He was hit on the left wrist in game two by Andy Pettit. That has bothered him but has not kept him out of the lineup. For Arizona. No balls, one strike from Clemens. One and one. Talked about the Diamondbacks pitching Derek Jeter inside. That's where the Yankees have tried to pitch Luis Gonzalez. First pitch, a tumbling splitter. Often a hitter will not get on the first pitch how a team's trying to pitch him. That's what setting up a hitter is all about. You can't keep busting him the same place all the time show him another look fastball up and out of the strike zone 95 miles per hour two and one one home run Gonzalez career against Roger Clemens but a 200 average there's one out of three against Clemens back in game three. Council has stayed put at first base so far, and with a count two and one, Clemens gives him a check. 
Because Roger Clemens is a fly ball pitcher, it would be unusual for the hit and run to be employed here. But Bob Brindley has said, given the opportunity, he will run against Roger Clemens. A little closer. In game three, Roger Clemens picked off Craig Council, and Council showed that he was going to second base then. Back in game three, he caught Council when his right foot was in the air going towards second with right. his big lead, and he almost did it again. Not as close as the last time. Council diving to the outside of the bag to make Martinez reach farther. Gonzalez with a count of two and one. Council not running, and Gonzalez fouls it away two and two. Balls, two strikes. Again inside, and for Roger Clemens, that ball had unusual movement. You don't see a cut fastball from Clemens. That's what that was. Look for Council to run right here. Running. Foul ball. In that game three, after picking off Craig Council, Roger Clemens walked Steve Finley, and then he struck out Gonzalez as Posada threw out Finley. So the Diamondbacks had two base runners in the first inning against Roger Clemens. But Clemens faced the minimum. Council running, Gonzalez grounds to first. It's a fair ball, two out. Down to second is Craig Council. Clemens starts off Gonzalez with a splitter. He fouls it off. Then he comes inside. He misses high. Away with the count two and two. He misses inside. And then two more foul balls. And then he finally gets him on the fastball in. So the Yankees continuing to bust Gonzalez inside. The wheel in the Arizona clubhouse, but at the top reads, who is our cleanup hitter going to be tonight? <laughs> Came up on Matt Williams prior to tonight's game. He slides in there. Was 0 for 2 against Clemens in game three. So far in the World Series, 6 out of 22. He had a pair of doubles in an eight run third inning last night in that 15 to 2 blowout. Runner at second with two out, no score, first inning. Matt Williams, strike one. Revolving door for cleanup hitters at the Diamondbacks. In the postseason, the Diamondbacks have had Finley there. They've had Matt Williams there. They've had Danny Batista there. They've had Durazo there. They've had Reggie Sanders there, who starts tonight on the bench for Bob Brenlin. His toughest decision, he said, making out tonight's Game 7 lineup. The 0 1. Late swing, and it's 0 and 2, 97 miles per hour. As Reggie Sanders sits and watches from the bench. Clemens making his sixth World Series start. He's 3 0 with an ERA of 1.59. In his first five. No record back in 1986 in two starts with Boston against the Mets. The 0 2. Williams just got a piece. 
Young Hun Kim watching from the Arizona dugout. Remember, in the late innings with a lead, it'll either be Kim or it could be Randy Johnson. Sure. Runner at second, two out. 0 2 pitch. It is frustrating for a pitcher to make pitches like Clements has made on Williams and to have him stay alive by fouling balls off. The first 0 2 pitch, and now this 0 2 pitch off the plate away. Great plate coverage by Williams. We have seen all but one of Roger Clemens postseason starts this year and this is the best early inning velocity we've seen from Clemens yet. Runner at second two out one ball two strikes. Joe Torrey's got to be very happy that Clemens that tweak in the hamstring the right hamstring and the leg off of which he drives appears to be very healthy. He lasted only four plus innings in game one of the division series and went four and a third in game five. Five innings and in his only start in the ALCS and seven innings in game three of the World Series. Better and deeper into the game each time out. A one two. It stays that way and Posada smacking his hand into the glove not coming up with that foul tip. Clemens has had a lot of lower body problems in his career but no arm problems because he uses that lower party lower part of his body off of which to drive tremendously powerful from the waist down a barrel of a man 240 six four and a half. 20 pitches in this first inning after Schilling through 12. Pitch count tonight would seem to be more important for Schilling working on short rest for the second time in this World Series. Runner at second two out one ball two strikes and Williams hops out of there. Inning over. The fourth ball to get Matt Williams. It took 21 pitches for Clemens to get through the first. Got around an error. And after one, in the desert, no score in game seven. The 2001 World Series on Fox, presented by Budweiser, is brought to you by the people of United Airlines. We are united. By Siemens, Siemens, global network of innovation. And by Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. Part of the order for the Yankees here in the second no score. Tina Martinez, Jorge Posada, and Shane Spencer against Kurt Schilling. And with help from his defense, got around a one-out double by Paul O'Neill in the first inning. Martinez takes a strike. Martinez so far in this World Series 0 for 5 against Kurt Schilling. Oh. Top heavy splitter. My goodness. Watch the bottom fall out of this baby. One out. We've talked about Roger Clemens' influence on Kurt Schilling early in Kurt's career. Here's what Clemens had to say to him back in 1991. Respect to your teammates, respect to the game, respect to the opponents, and what you do to prepare to pitch, and respecting the profession. And uh, if you can have that, you can, uh, you know, you can you can do it with the talent you have. Kurt Schilling has said that after that meeting, it was like getting a third eye. Three straight splitters to Tino Martinez gets it. One out, nobody on. Posada takes the ball up and away. 
Schilling will tell you that not only was Roger Clemens helpful in watching him from a distance and trying to get him on the right path to start him. Greatness in this game as Posada flies one to left. Gonzalez a long run, two out. But when Schilling joined this Diamondback team on July 26 last year and he hooked up with Randy Johnson the two have really helped one another and that metamorphosis is now complete from a guy who took his ability for granted took his between start preparation not as seriously as he does now a guy who is constantly talking pitching on the bench when he and Randy Johnson are both sitting there and he has had a lot of positive influence from so many who are seated around him here tonight two out nobody on strike one on Shane Spencer so you had the meeting with Roger Clemens in 1991 Schilling meeting up with Johnson in 2000 and sandwiched in between his pitching coach for the Phillies Johnny Padres who won game seven of the 1955 World Series two to nothing. Spencer hits one to center field that thing is crushed Finley back to get it 400 feet away. Defense again. Helped Schilling in the first it helped Schilling in the second what a catch by Finley. Bottom of the second in game seven in Phoenix no score. The 2001 World Series on Fox, presented by Budweiser, is brought to you by Nissan, driven by Sonic Care, advanced technology for whiter, healthier teeth, and by Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. Steve Finley will lead it off for Arizona after making this running catch out in center to end the top of the second. A lot of people will see the catch, but you fail to see perhaps the type of jump that an outfielder like Finley gets on a ball excellent jump nice play. So Finley first up and he takes the ball up and away Steve Finley 0 for 2 in game 3 with a couple of walks against Roger Clemens so far in this postseason he has been the Diamondbacks most consistent hitter with the exception of the guy on deck when he's had a chance Danny Batista Finley, one hopper to Jeter good play to his left. Finley hitting 354 prior to that ground out. That'll bring in Danny Batista with one out, nobody on. That ball fooled Derek Jeter. He did not have the normal jump. Once he recovers, he throws him out. You can see that hesitation right there. Playing that ball awkwardly off to the side. Ball was hit hard. So with one out nobody on here's Batista who is six out of nine in this World Series. A lot of that damage done against Andy Pettit. But because of the way he is according to Bob Brenly locked in. He has to be in the Arizona Diamondback lineup and that forces Reggie Sanders to the bench. A guy who hit 33 home runs and drove in 90 runs during the regular season. Time called at the plate. Roger Clemens, a high ball pitcher. Reggie Sanders, a low ball hitter. This move makes a lot of sense for the Diamondbacks. Clemens getting the corner, and it's one and one. First breaking ball by Clemens. Bob Brindley telling us with Mark Grace on deck, telling us before the game that. Reggie Sanders may pop that ball up up and away you throw it to Danny Batista he may hit it in the swimming pool late swing and a miss one and two they have changed the ruling as you look at the last swing and miss on the fork ball from Clemens Batista came up empty on the play back in the first they've taken the error away from Tino Martinez and charged it to Roger Clemens covering Martinez gets an assist and Clemens gets an error. Two balls, two strikes. Just so you get another look at it. Here it is. Martinez not able to make the play cleanly. 
Clemens a little late in getting there and stumbling across the bag and it's Clemens who comes up with the error. Lucky he didn't turn an ankle or a foot that left foot going off the side of the bag. With one out the 2 2 pitch. Three balls two strikes with Mark Grace on deck. Bullpen for the Yankees watching as Clemens tries to get through these early innings trying to keep those emotions that adrenaline in check something he has struggled with in years past three two pitch a one on walk here's Joe Torrey talking about his right hander being excited in the early innings he's a lot emotional. Uh, I think our problem with Roger and I is trying to keep him in touch with the rubber because he's going to be flying high and, and hopefully he's got a good command. And that's the important thing with Roger. He needs to have command. We feel he's physically uh, in good shape. And if that's the case, then I think we're going to see a good ball game. So far, Clemens is not allowed to hit. He's pitched around an error. He has one strikeout. He has walked one, and the man he just walked, he checks on over at first, Danny Batista. Mark Grace is in the lineup and to the surprise of some Arizona fans Arubio Durazo is not. Durazo was two for two at a walk in game three against Clemens. Grace as we showed you is only two out of 15 but Bob Brenly told us before the game that Mark Grace has played too long to get to this moment game seven. And he feels like Grace will do something big here tonight. Ball one from Clemens. Situation where Bob is implying opportunity meets experience. We talked about Brindley not putting the runner in motion. However, with a guy like Grace, you can do that because Grace can put the high fastball in play on the ground. He's the only one who can do that in the Diamonds back lineup for the most part. Runner is going, hit and run, fly ball to left, base hit. Bautista will hold it second two on one out a walk a hit and Grace did put it in play. This makes all the sense in the world because of the bat control of Mark Grace fastball away you could see almost aiming the ball the other way. Bautista had to make sure Derek Jeter could have been called for interference Jeter was on the bag but look at the move right there by Mark Grace that's concentration and a liner the other way now with two on one out the Diamondbacks need a hit from their number eight hitter Damian Miller their catcher you know what Joe I think Derek Jeter was you trying to decoy Batista and in the process is on the bag breaking Batista's stride I think Bob Brindley and the Diamondbacks had a point then that Jeter could have interfered with Batista even though he made no contact. Batista the lead runner at second with Grace at first. One out. Two and oh on Miller with Schilling on deck. One of the advantages the Diamondbacks have in this ball game is they have eight and a half hitters in their lineup. The Yankees have eight. Kurt Schilling with much more experience as a batsman than Roger Clemens. Two old pitch. I think had so much movement on it. Posada couldn't catch it. It's two and one. It might have been a cross up. Watch Posada's difficulty in centering this ball off the end of the glove or the heel of the glove. 18 pass balls on the year by Posada, the most in the American League. Just looked like it jumped on him a little yeah. bit. Usually when a catcher, with a runner on at second base, when a catcher goes out to the mound to talk to a pitcher, it's a cross up. Don't know there, but could have been. At least the visit makes it look good. Yeah, right. <laughs> two balls and a strike, two on, one out. That'll get out of play, two and two. 96 miles per hour. We've seen Clements hit 97. Able to drive off that back leg, generate the power. 
that has helped him win 280 games in the big leagues. He is the active career leader in that category. Number three on the all time strikeout list. Two up. Second strikeout of the night. Now the inning is up to Kurt Schilling. Nobody features power splitters any more than the two pitchers tonight. Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling. Just devastating movement below the knees. So here's half a hitter. Yep. Kurt Schilling. Yep. 11 out of 83 during the regular season. And Clemens gets the benefit of the doubt on the outside corner on one. Hey, you don't want to say nine hitters in the lineup because after all Kurt Schilling has to face a very difficult pitcher in Roger Clemens. But he does handle the bat fairly well. Puts the ball in play often. Going to be hard pressed to do it now as he's set up at 0 and 2. For Schilling it's almost like hitting against himself right now. He's got another scouting report. High heat. Shoot top splitters. High heat one and two. Tony Womack on deck. As Schilling waits for the 40th pitch of the night from Roger Clemens. Schilling has had to throw only 19 through two innings. Talk about overthrowing. Two and two. Talk about a tough time Posada is having behind the plate. Normally the efficiency of the pitcher means the catcher and the umpire could have problems. Posada lucky that that was not a pass ball. He's had problems with two pitches from Clemens this inning. Clemens huffing and puffing. And blowing Schilling away. 95 miles per hour back to back strikeouts after the Diamondbacks put two on with one out. Let's go to the third game seven no score. The World Series on Fox is presented by Budweiser with the crisp clean refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. Bottom three in the lineup for New York Soriano Brocious and Clemens. No score. Kurt Schilling is back to work. He struck out two. He's allowed one hit but faced the minimum. As he drills the outside corner with strike one. The numbers for Soriano in this World Series. The postseason overall, 273. Oh and two. Mel Stottlemyre talking to Roger Clemens, who's thrown 41 pitches in two innings. The only thing I can see is Roger may be a little strong. That's certainly normal in a game like this. Clemens able to lean on a pitching coach who's been in this situation for the Yankees starting a game seven back in 1964 against St. Louis. 0 2 pitch. Still 0 2. And a matchup of Gibson and Stottlemyre. Cardinals winning that game. Stottlemyre making three starts in that World Series as Gibson did as Schilling is doing in this World Series. It was Gibson Stottlemyre all three games. The 0 2 pitch Soriano into right field for Batista. One out in the third. With the bases empty and one away. Here's Scott Brocious, who is booed here at Bank One Ballpark because of that two out, two run home run he hit in the ninth inning off Byung Hung Kim to tie game five. The game the Yankees won 3 2 on the Soriano 12th inning game winning RBI hit. To the right side for Grace, the 
would stay in play. Yep, two out. Tim, we heard prior to game one of this World Series that the Yankees' approach was going to be to lay back a little bit, let Schilling throw pitches. If they see something they like, fine, the Yankees will go after it. But the Yankees are up there going after the first pitch more times in this game than they have in either of the other two that Schilling has started against them. And I think they should. I think that's the approach to Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling led the majors in first pitch strikes this year. Seven out of ten pitches. Seventy percent of the time he threw a first pitch strike. So with that in mind why let him get ahead of you. He falls behind Clemens. One ball one strike as Clemens almost took a seat after that swing. With two out nobody on. Ninety seven from Schilling to his counterpart Roger Clemens who now knows what the other half feels like. Clemens the strikeout Schilling's third of the night bottom of the third coming up welcome back to bank one ballpark here in Phoenix Arizona we move to the bottom of the third inning there's Paul Beeston president and chief operating officer of Major League Baseball what a proud moment for baseball here in game seven of this 2001 World Series. As Tony Womack who is 0 for 1. Leads it off he fly to center his first time and he takes ball one here. As we mentioned only the third time in the last 14 years. That there has been a game seven. Showing bunt. First time we've seen that look by an Arizona hitter something that you pointed out at the beginning of the night that the Diamondbacks may try to do with Clemens and that bad hamstring on the mound. Bob Brindley's line on that is the appropriate players have been told about Clemens poor fielding. A one one. Yeah, that was part of the scouting report not just the pitching stuff that Clemens brings with him to the mound but how he is moving around and the Diamondbacks believe that Clemens has had trouble even when he gets to a ball turning and throwing to a base the one two two balls two strikes a lot of pitchers have that problem because they're used to throwing home with movement so when they throw to a base often there's movement two and two the count Womack strikes out foul tip hung on to by Posada here is Arizona manager Bob Brenly giving a scouting report on Roger Clemens you have to lay off the high fastball he, he loves to tease guys up around the letters with that 95 or 96 mile an hour heater and uh, if you can lay off that pitch force him to get the fastball down in the strike zone uh, we feel we've got a chance to, to hit him well um, the split fingers a devastating pitch much like Shills and uh, that's another pitch you know you lay off the high one up here and lay off the low one down there and it's a lot easier said than done. So far Clemens four strikeouts one walk he's allowed one hit pitched around an error. And he faces counsel. He chopped the ball down the right side it landed right on the baseline. Martinez could not make. The play to his left. And then in feeding it late to Clemens Clemens dropped it. And it was Clemens who was charged with the error. So Council 0 for 1 and now 1 for 21. Boy, Clemens just rearing back and blowing it by Council. One ball, one strike. In our, in our scouting report with Mike Messina the other night, you may remember we talked about Mike Messina and how proficient he was east and west, inside corner, outside corner. Clemens and Schilling are proficient north and south. Up in the strike zone, down in the strike zone. Up the middle, Council's on with a hit. 
second Arizona hit of the night. And Clemens, like any pitcher, if he gets it in the middle of the strike zone, he gets hit hard. And that's where that pitch was. Posada sitting outside, right down the pipe. That part of the bat, base hit council. You saw Posada go to his right about a foot. So Clements really missed the mark then. Now Gonzalez. He was up in this spot back in the first inning with Council at first one out. He grounded out to first. And again, Council almost caught taking his lead from first base. Roger Clements has had success in getting Craig Council on the wrong foot, leaning towards second base several times. Council set now, and he gets a throw again. Talk about that right foot if it's up in the air. That foot has to come down before the base runner can make the move back to the first base bag. That's why you want to get set before the pitcher is able to move quickly. What makes a good move for a right-hander, quick feet. That's an interesting point, Joe, because in your timing, when you're taking your lead off of first base, you don't want to have the right foot in the air when the pitcher is thinking about going to first base. Because as you said, you have to put it down and then go back to first. Too much to do. Gonzalez takes a strike. 50 pitches now on the night for Roger Clemens. Gonzalez, six out of 23 in this World Series with one home run. But again, 57 during the regular season. After hitting a career high 31 last year. Up and away, one ball, one strike. When a man hits 57 home runs during the regular season, you're playing deep. <laughs> As the Yankees are, at least in the outfield, the infield shortened up for the double play ball. That's foul. Splitter, Gonzalez out in front. And the exit foul. Another middle of the plate of the plate splitter. I got my splitter and plate mixed up and kind of call it a splate. That's a new word. As opposed to Mr. Splitty, which is what <laughs> Roger has taken to calling that pitch. Mr. Splitty just hung up in the happy zone for Mr. Gonzalez. Here's a one-two pitch. Fastball up and out of the strike zone, 95 miles per hour, two and two. Remember, Roger Clemens is working with a lot of backup tonight. Orlando Hernandez, Mike Messina, possibly Andy Pettit in the bullpen for the Yankees, along with Hitchcock, Stanton, Mendoza, and Rivera. Time for both managers to clean out their refrigerator tonight. Here's a 2-2 pitch from number 2-2. Struck him out, throw down to first, and Council just back ahead of the tag. Two T out. Tino Martinez had to get ready for the ball in case Gonzalez hit it. For that reason, he was in front of the bag, catches it in front of the bag, and has to dive back to try to get Council. You can see Martinez trying to get ready in case Gonzalez hits the ball. Now the quick throw. That's a lot for a first baseman to do with a guy who can pull the ball like Luis Gonzalez. We mentioned it earlier in this series. Scott Brocious and others have said that people who follow the Yankees don't realize how good of a first baseman Tino Martinez is. They will if he is gone after this season. Free agent to be. As is Knobloch, as is Brocious. 
El Duque's contract is up arbitration eligible he may pack his bags and Paul O'Neill will likely retire at the end of the year. So for this core group which started this run back in 1996 has added has subtracted along the way. This is the final run for players like those we show you O'Neill Tino Martinez Brocious Knobloch maybe even El Duque one on two out no score bottom of the third game seven off the plate and foul one ball one strike Paul Anka may rewrite it a different way but the Yankees facing their final curtain but they've done it their way. Here's Hernandez out in the bullpen. The Yankees have done it over these years with seemingly a different guy every series. But the constant has been Rivera out in that bullpen. A 1 1 to Williams. Off the plate again. It's a fair ball. Bare hand try by Brocious. Safe, and it's two on, two out. Sometimes the pitch is so good, the splitter by Clemens, that an infielder has to make an unusual play. And Brocious tried to glove it, too much to do. He had to barehand the ball right there on the second hop. The throw is low. Martinez can't come up with it. So now it's two on with two out. Council stayed put as Martinez at least kept it on the infield for the Yankees. It's a base hit. Two singles in the inning. Three on the night. The Diamondbacks have had five base runners. But nobody has dented home plate. Steve Finley could change that. Grounded out his first time. And takes ball one. Posada still having problems centering that fastball from Clemens. Ball is hitting in the heel of the glove, the webbing of the glove, which is fine. But the heel and both sides, that's bad. A 1 0. One ball, one strike. You saw the numbers for Finley, who has been productive in the postseason. A 354 hitter. Coming into this game, he's 0 for 1. Two on, two out. That's backing out of play, strike two. Steve Finley trying to put Arizona on top. Give them a third inning lead. And now Posada will go out and talk to Clemens. Could be pitch selection, could be location. If you're Steve Finley, you look for either fastball or splitter. And as Bob Brindley said, that's easier said than done. Get the eye movement from the shoulders to the feet. That really expands the strike zone up and down. Clemens has struck out five. Finley able to lay off that high fastball, 96, and it's two and two. Jorge Posada did not give a sign. You picked that up on a game the other day, Joe. He went out there, and Clemens gave him verbally what he was going to throw, and it was a fastball. Now back to the fingers. So unlike a two-minute drill, the quarterback didn't call two plays during the huddle, just one. <laughs> This place ready to erupt if Finley can get a hit. 
Clemens strikes him out. Six strikeouts on the night for the five time Cy Young Award winner. We go to the fourth inning of game seven. Still no score. The 2001 World Series on Fox is presented by Budweiser. Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. Welcome back to Bank One Ballpark. It's the fourth inning of Game 7. There is no score. The Diamondbacks have three hits. The Yankees only one. The Yankees have committed the game's only error. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, Michael Weissman, Bill Webb with you. A matchup of Schilling and Clemens. And so far, neither pitcher has disappointed. As the top of the order will bat for the Yankees, Jeter, O'Neill, and Williams. Jeter struck out looking his first time up and takes a ball low. Three out of 24 for Jeter in this World Series. Mixed in there, 0 for 6 against Schilling. One ball, one strike. Joe, we talked about this in the opening, and it is absolutely remarkable that the Yankees, this is their seventh game, and they have had one inning in this series in which they have had a runner on at third base and less than two outs. And they did that with a score 15 to nothing last night. Fastball for a strike. It's one and two. Credit the Arizona pitching. Absolutely. They have been fantastic. Whether it's been Schilling or Johnson or Batista or Brian Anderson. The starting pitching for the Diamondbacks is outpitched. The starting pitching for the New York Yankees. Joe Torre saying before the game tonight that offensively we don't match up. It's all been based on pitching the success we've had and this is the first team that could match up with us on the mound. They have not only matched up with the Yankees they have outpitched the Yankees with the exception of the two closers Rivera and Kim. Jeter got a piece of it to stay alive it's still two and two. Yeah for the Diamondbacks for the most part their victories have come early in the game middle of the game the Yankees of course have won two dramatic games game four and five and that's why we are tied three three for Arizona the relievers 0 and two with a four point one five ERA the starters three and one and the one loss belongs to Brian Anderson who was fantastic matching up against Roger Clemens in game three here's a two two pitch to Jeter leading off into right field for Batista. One away. That'll bring in Paul O'Neill, who was serenaded by the Yankee Stadium fans back in game five. <laughs> Acknowledging the crowd, telling our Kevin Kennedy after the game. What a way to go out for the Yankees for Paul O'Neill that game five three two win. Roche has tied it in the ninth Soriano won it in the twelfth. Ball one outside to Paul O'Neill who doubled the only Yankee hit of the night and then was thrown out trying to stretch it to a triple on a good defensive play by Batista the right fielder counsel the second baseman throwing to Matt Williams who applied the tag. Neal does have five World Series rings. 1990 with Cincinnati. And then the four with the Yankees. Two balls, no strikes. Rare that Schilling is behind a hitter, 2-0. 2-1. And thinking about that... Uh, that relay play in the first inning right on the outside corner it is rare that you get a runner when a ball is bounced to an infielder usually an outfielder has to hit the infielder chest high to get the play but that's why counsel the bigger part of that play 
with the strong throw to Matt Williams at third to get O'Neal. Now it's three and one. Top of the fourth inning, no score. Game seven of the 97th World Series. O'Neill takes a strike, full count. Still three and two. Here's that play in the first inning with one out. A low fastball to O'Neill, right center field. Bautista gets to it. Now watch his throw. One hop. Council moving toward third. No hops to Matt Williams to get Paul O'Neill. Big play in this game so far. Three two pitch two out. Four strikeouts for Kurt Schilling. There hasn't been a more awkward swing all night. Here is tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the last National League pitcher to throw a complete game in game seven of the World Series. Like a rusty razor through a thick beard. That's a bad swing by O'Neill. Two out, nobody on. Bernie Williams, strike one. Kurt Schilling, who the day after that game four start, said his arm felt terrible was sending out messages and hinting to people that he would not be available for game seven has felt better every day since then and here he is in game seven throwing in the mid to high 90s terrific control and he is trying to add to the stellar World Series career numbers two and one with a two point four five ERA that dates back to nineteen ninety three in his days with Philadelphia. Two balls and a strike on Williams. Schilling is 4 and 0 with a 0 0.88 ERA this postseason with three complete games. Two and two on Bernie Williams. Welcome back our Aflac trivia question who was the last National League pitcher to throw a complete game in game seven of the World Series Steve Blass 1971 the Pittsburgh Pirates Danny Batista first up ball one up and in then those terrible control problems plague Steve Blass in 1973 and they did not leave him. Now one of the voices for the Pittsburgh Pirates as Batista faces Roger Clemens Danny Batista walked his first time to the plate behind second base Jeter going out Williams coming in it's the center fielder for the first out Danny Batista 
who had reached base five consecutive times dating back to last night's game six start is retired for the first time tonight to start the fourth talked about Steve Blass being the first the last NL pitcher to pitch a complete game in game seven the last complete game in game seven pitched by Jack Morris in 1991 and it was one of the most memorable performances in World Series history just unbelievable ten innings to beat the Braves one to nothing Mark Grace at that point in his career had played in the big leagues for three seasons. A 1 0. Two balls, no strikes to Mark Grace, who has one of the three Arizona hits tonight. On 2 0, Grace took a strike belt high pitch from Clemens so Clemens gets the high strike it's two and one keep in mind that the home team has won every game of this series three by the Diamondbacks here three by the Yankees in New York Jeter can't make the play up his arm into left field and Grace is on for the second time tonight. Off the heel of the glove. And I think that will be a base hit. Tough play. That ball squirting away from Jeter. So Mark Grace now with two hits in this ball game. A pair of singles and Damian Miller will bat. Miller missed game five with a strained muscle in his right calf. Played in game six last night. Late with that swing, strike one. It's in the middle of the plate, but you can see the action when it hits Posada's mitt, and mitt going about six inches to the right. It's Miller up now, one on one out, with Kurt Schilling waiting on deck. Strike two. A lot of folks may think that the action of a particular pitch stops when it hits the mitt. That's not true. With a pitcher like Clemens, with a pitcher like Kurt Schilling, Randy Johnson. No balls, two strikes on Miller. Wow. 95 miles per hour, and Clemens got it past Miller to strike him out for the second time tonight. That's seven overall. See Posada centering this one. There's that action we were talking about. It looked like the ball, when it hit the mid, it darted about three inches to the left. Now it's Kurt Schilling. 95 miles per hour Schilling struck out against Clemens in the second and Clemens struck out against Schilling in the third. One ball one strike. The night for Roger Clemens as the Diamondbacks have put up four hits. Back in the second had two on with one out but Clemens came back with back to back strikeouts. Schilling able to put the bat on the ball but now he's in the hole one and two. Another strikeout for Clemens, eight on the night. We came in talking about the starting pitching matchup, all of baseball talking about the matchup of Clemens and Schilling. The two are on so far. We go to the fifth inning. Game seven, 
Still no score. Back after this from your local Fox station. The World Series on Fox is presented by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. The four, five, and six hitters for New York against Kurt Schilling. Fifth inning, no score. Diamondbacks have out hit the Yankees four to one. Clemens has struck out eight. Schilling has struck out five. Here's Martinez who struck out his first time and he takes a ball outside. A steady diet of split fingered pitches from Schilling to Tino Martinez his first time up. Fastball misses low and it's 2 and 0. Oh. Keep in mind that Roger Clemens had five starts this year where he threw over 120 pitches. He's up to 75 while Kurt Schilling is only at 48 as he works here in the fifth. The 2 0. -oh. Schilling gets the outside corner 2 and 1. Just nips the front corner. Says home plate umpire Steve Ripley. Two balls and a strike. To the right side, it's foul. The, the problem with the, the Yankees offense is that they've been making early outs in the inning. That's why they can't get a runner to third base. They've done it again in only one inning in seven games. A runner at third with less than two outs. So it's the inability to score cheap runs against the Diamondback pitchers that is the point there. No ground ball, no sacrifice flies. Three balls, two strikes on the leadoff hitter, Tino Martinez. When the Yankees have scored, the Diamondback pitchers have made them earn it. Seven of the 12 runs scored, once again, the home run. Pretty good swing by Tino Martinez, and the count remains full. This series, the Yankee offense, first six innings, they've scored a total of six runs. From the seventh inning on, they've scored the other six. Three home runs in the late innings, and that grand total of 12 runs scored as they play in game seven of this World Series. 3 2 pitch. Another foul. Martinez only three out of 18 in the World Series 0 for 6 matching up against Kurt Schilling just able to get a piece that was a high splitter. The thing about Schilling, he throws so many strikes, he makes you commit on a ball. Schilling this postseason has thrown 45 innings. He has allowed four runs on 20 hits. Still three and two. Kurt Schilling had the splitter grip early, as you could see. The center field camera getting into the glove of Kurt Schilling. And the result, the toppling effect. A dead spin usually means bad spin for hitters. Three two. Good battle between Martinez and Schilling. Say it again. Schilling 45 innings pitched in this postseason, allowing four runs.
Easy into center for Finley. Schilling wins that battle with Tino Martinez. One out. That'll bring in Jorge Posada. Fox Tuesday, it's a new episode of the Smash Hit That 70s Show. And the Simpsons' all new Halloween special, which was delayed because of the World Series. And Kiefer Sutherland stars in the series premiere of 24. It all starts Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Here's Posada, who is one out of seven against Schilling in this World Series. Flied into left his first time up. Ball one. You could see a Schilling there nodding his head to the right, asking home plate umpire Steve Ripley if that ball was outside. He received the affirmative. Same pitch, and it's a strike. One ball, one strike. Went right back out there. This one gets the front corner. According to home plate umpire Steve Ripley, the 1 1 pitch. 1 and 2, and Schilling has Posada set up for his sixth strikeout of the night. Sixty one pitches now for Schilling, who threw eighty eight pitches in game four and said he was finished. The two two pitch, two out. You talk about dejection when Posada takes this fastball the head drops as though I had no chance in that at bat. That's the type pitching both teams are seeing tonight. The Yankees still with only one hit. Schilling has faced the minimum. O'Neill who got that hit was thrown out trying to go to third. Back in the first inning. With two out, Shane Spencer takes a ball. Shane Spencer homered against Kurt Schilling. One of only two runs the Yankees have scored against Schilling. He hit it to right field in Yankee Stadium, but right field in this ballpark, much deeper than Yankee Stadium. 2 0. Oh. Jerry Colangelo, the owner of these Diamondbacks. First year for their franchise, 1998. Same year the Yankees started this run of three World Series in a row. And here are the Diamondbacks. The fourth different opponent in the last four years for Brian Cashman's Yankees. 98, it was San Diego. 99, Atlanta. Last year, the Mets. Spencer swinging on 3 and 0 and he pops it up. Kurt Schilling doing it again. Who will blink first tonight? Schilling or Clemens? The Rocket back to the mound, no score, bottom of the fifth. The 2001 World Series on Fox presented by Budweiser is brought to you by Xbox. See it at Xbox.com. Play it starting November 15th. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by Budweiser with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in the beer. This Bud's for you. Before the bottom of the fifth, our MasterCard fan camp. Top of the order will bat for Arizona here in the fifth inning. As Clemens goes back to the hill and he misses with ball one. 
Well we have seen a lot of 3 0 swings in this World Series with mm -hmm. really no success at all. Spencer just went after a 3 0 pitch and flied to center to end the top of this fifth. On a ball that was caught by the second baseman out in the outfield grass. And Kurt Schilling has faced the minimum through five on the other side. Roger Clemens has thrown 77 pitches. He has struck out eight and allowed no runs on four hits. Two balls and a strike on Womack who has flied to center and struck out in the games that we've done Joe I cannot remember a player getting a hit on a 3 0 count. It's unusual because this year in the major leagues regular season hitters hit 4 0 4 on a 3 0 count when they put the ball in play. Well here it's three and one on Womack and the Diamondbacks would love to get Tony Womack on and let him run or let Council bunt make something happen on the bases three and two and Womack it looked like was taken. Good policy making Clemens throw two strikes and not one Clemens on the other hand will try to get him to hit the ball in the air to center or to left. Taps it on the ground two hops to Soriano. One up. That's the way we begin the bottom of the fifth inning. Womack hitless tonight last night such a big part of the Arizona attack. As he had three hits in his first four at bats drove home two, scored two. As the Diamondbacks raised their team average 62 points <laughs> with last night's 15 to 2 shellacking of the Yankees. A lot of guys got well in Diamondback uniforms. Some of those guys out of the lineup tonight for Bob Brenly against the right handed throwing Roger Clemens. One guy stayed in because of a big night Danny Batista. Here's Craig Council who's been on base twice. Reached on an error singled up the middle takes a strike. Thirty nine year old Clemens misses with ball one. Came up in 1984 with Boston. It was a Cy Young Award winner and an MVP in 1986 with the Red Sox. One of only nine pitchers to accomplish that. Council gets it over the head of Clemens. Jeter. Good play for the second out of the inning. Don Zimmer says that Derek Jeter on this particular play is the best he's ever seen. Glove down, body down, throw hard. That is a very difficult play. Excuse me, Joe. Watch the ball stay down. Jeter down. Strong throw to get it. So the good play by Jeter, and there has to be some concern. Although that concern may fade away here shortly with the hamstring of Clemens who had to leap high in the air came down. Brocious immediately went over to him after the play. Clemens was bent over talking to Brocious and after Posada visited him. Gonzalez will dig in with two out and nobody on. It looked like Jeter may have strained either a hamstring or a lower back. He's moving around bending at shortstop Clemens stepped off the mound to look at him. And to give him an extra breath. Gonzalez takes a strike and he's surprised that was a strike. And a play like this can injure either a hamstring or lower back when you consider all the things he had to do to make it. With two out, Gonzalez. 0 oh 2. No two count. Jeter did not get a visit from the trainer. As Gonzalez looks at ball one outside.
Two out bases empty. Two ground ball outs. Ground balls have been rare in this game against Clemens. The one two pitch to Gonzalez. Another ground ball. Soriano boots it. And Gonzalez is on with two out here in the fifth. Third error of this World Series for Soriano. When you hear that term, an infielder allows the ball to play him. Usually, an infielder is back on his heels. You see how Soriano backs up on that ball instead of charging it. Right there. Back on the heels, ball bounces too far away, even with a strong arm. Gonzalez safe. So the Yankee defense continues to disappoint. The Yankee pitching staff last night a misplay by Brocious at third failure to turn a double play led to a big Arizona inning now an error brings Williams to the plate and what a swing he had but a foul back strike one. That part of the bat on that ball. Williams with good power the other way. The outfielders of the Yankees playing an extra step or two deep. This is an early form of a double prevent defense. You don't want the ball going over your head, allowing Gonzalez to score. For the most part, you're saying the Diamondbacks have to give two hits to score the run, not one. The Yankees now have committed five errors in the four games played here at Bank One Ballpark. Two tonight, one by Clemens. Could have gone to Clemens and Martinez, now one by Soriano in this fifth inning, and Matt Williams rounds to short. A force out at second. The inning is over. Four ground balls in the inning. One error, one left. Diamondbacks have left seven. We've played five. No score. The 2001 World Series on Fox is presented by Budweiser. Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. We go to the sixth inning of Game 7. There's a hero waiting to be found down there somewhere on that field. Right now, two heroes are the two starters, Kurt Schilling and Roger Clemens. Soriano. Gets one off the hands and fouls it away. Strike one. Soriano, Brocious, and Clemens against Kurt Schilling, who this postseason has allowed 20 hits and 155 at bats. Opponents are hitting 129 against him, and these are playoff lineups. Soriano fly to right his first time. One ball, one strike. Joe, usually in games like this, a double threat. Ends up being the difference, and Soriano's a double a double threat. Guys who can run and hit with power, because they can beat you either on the bases or with the long ball. Mentioned Schilling gave up 37 home runs during the regular season, as he just missed off the outside corner, two balls and a strike. Schilling wanted the fastball, just outside. Two and two. Yankee hitters cannot catch up to that shilling fastball. And they're out in front of the splitter. One away, strikeout number seven for Kurt Schilling. Soriano blown away. Most world championships. The Yankees have 26 to go with their 38 pennants. The Canadians in hockey, 23. Celtics from the NBA 16 the NFL the Packers 12 Brocious foul straight back the Yankee franchise 
won five world championships in a row between 1949 and 1953 and four in a row prior to that from 1936 to 1939. This group trying to put four in a row together and they have met their match with the Arizona Diamondbacks. 0 oh and 2 on Brocious and in particular the pitching of Schilling and Randy Johnson. The Yankees trying to add their name to this list. They're already up there twice. Four or more straight championships. The Celtics with eight between 1959 and 1966. But here are the Diamondbacks. Fourth year of their franchise history. Schilling strikes out Brocious two away. Eight strikeouts for Schilling. And only Roger Clemens stands between Schilling and the end of the top of the sixth inning. And we have seen some horrible Yankee swings against the pitching of Kurt Schilling. Five of the last seven Yankees have struck out. Schilling, a guy who gets stronger as the game goes along. Don't know how he's going to react with just three days rest. His second start, three days rest. Missing with ball one to Roger Clemens. Roger struck out his first time up. Puts the bat on the ball, flies to Batista. And the Yankees go in order. Schilling has still faced the minimum, allowed only one hit. Bottom of the sixth inning, Finley, Batista, Grace coming up for the Diamondbacks, no score. The Yankees have been concerned with a hamstring strain of Roger Clemens through this postseason. He looks strong here tonight. Meanwhile, Derek Jeter looks like he is bothered by some sort of leg injury. As Steve Finley takes a pitch high for ball one. I think he injured it on that play, that Craig Council play, going over the mound. Obviously not serious. Not serious enough to get him out of there. Finley floats one to center for a leadoff hit. Fifth hit of the night for Arizona. And for the first time all night, the leadoff man is on. When you get a leadoff batter on and he can run well, that's much, much better. Think about it. Than a player who clogs up the bases. So that leadoff batter with a fast runner like Finley gets Romero Mendoza up for the Yankees. This is a tough read. I mean, do you bunt with a a guy like Batista? You've got Grace on deck. They're going to walk Grace. I don't think a bunt's in order now. You walk Grace to get to Damian Miller in the pitcher, and nobody's warming up. So I think he's swinging. Add to that, Danny Batista swinging the bat so well, right? Well enough to force Reggie Sanders to the bench, and Batista makes his first start of this World Series against a right-handed pitcher. Into left center field. That ball is going to get down. That ball is going to put Arizona on top. Danny Batista delivers again. Going for third. Out, but it's 1-0 Arizona. Roger Clemens may have thought Batista was bunting. He threw a fastball, a high fastball, on the inside part of the plate. Watch Batista. Shells it to left center. Finley scores. As we said, he can run. Watch this play by Jeter. Athletically, strong throw. Quick tag to get Batista. The second runner retired at third tonight. But the Diamondbacks take the lead. Now the bases are empty with one out. We have our first run of the night. 
And the Diamondbacks are out in front here in game seven. A single by Finley, an RBI double by Batista out at third, 8 6 5 on the play. Well, we have seen some magnificent throws by two cutoff men. One by second baseman Craig Council in the first to get Paul O'Neill, and now Derek Jeter receiving the ball in midair, coming down and making a strike at third. Grace reaching for it, bounces one to Soriano. Two out in the inning. There is no doubt that Jeter is bothered with some sort of leg trouble. And there he is up in the air, gathering it in, throwing in one motion to third to get Batista. The reaction to the out at third, but the big picture, it's one to nothing, Arizona in the bottom of the sixth. Now with two out, nobody on, and a run in, it's Damian Miller, and it's strike one. Watch Jeter, or I should say, watch Brocious with a quick tag. Derek Jeter in midair when he received the ball, and he came down and threw the ball flat footed. Oh, and two the count. <laughs> Boy, that is some throw. And some piece of hitting by Batista. One ball, two strikes on Damian Miller. Bob Brenly staying with Danny Batista, staying with the hot hand. And on the second extra base hit of the night, the other belonging to O'Neill back in the top of the first. Batista puts the Diamondbacks up one to nothing in the sixth inning of game seven. And Miller stays at the plate one and two. I wonder if Jorge Posada and Roger Clemens were thinking that Batista may have been bunning. Usually in that situation, a pitcher will go to his fastball, preferably up, try to get the hitter to pop it up. Batista did not give Clemens a second chance. That's foul. Still one and two on Damian Miller. A one run inning in this game seems like a six run inning. Clemens strikes out his ninth, but in the inning, the Diamondbacks get on the board. Who will blink first? Roger Clemens will blink first. A hit by Finley, an RBI double by Batista, one to nothing Arizona. Back after this from your local Fox station. Danny Batista puts Arizona on top. With an RBI double in the bottom of the sixth and now in the top of the seventh in game seven it's the top of the order for the Yankees Jeter O'Neill and Williams. If anybody gets on Tino Martinez against Kurt Schilling. Strike one. Jeter is struck out. He's flying to right. Batista will play it on a hop, and the Yankees put their leadoff man on, and Jeter was limping down the line. Back to the Danny Batista hit for the only run so far tonight. Great hitting. Poor base running. You don't want to make the first out at third base. Great relay by Derek Jeter. Quick tag by Brocious. But the Diamondbacks are on the board. No real surprise that Batista was hitting. Bob Brenly, in fact, had a change of heart prior to that swing. I'll put Bun on, and then I change my mind. I'm going to give him one whack at it right here. He made the right choice. I'll say. <laughs> now the tying run is on. Jeter is running as O'Neill lines one to center. 
blocked by Finley on a terrific play by the center fielder, and it's two on with nobody out as O'Neill has his second hit of the night. Back to back singles, and the Yankees had started Jeter on the play. Nice play by Finley. Probably didn't even realize it. He came in quickly, smothers the ball in front of him. Derek Jeter running on the play. Now he sees the ball in front of him, stops, continues too late. But a fine play, as you said, Joe, by Steve Finley. Now Jeter whacking that right knee, thinking he could have been on third, but he had no idea whether Finley was going to try for the shoestring catch or not. Playing it on a hop, and now for the first time tonight, the Yankees have two on in this seventh inning, nobody out. And Bernie Williams, who is 0 for 2, is at the plate. This is a bunning situation, but keep in mind the Yankees do not like to sacrifice. It is rare that Bernie Williams is called on to bunt. Swinging, and that's strike one. Joe Torrey figuring if Danny Batista can hit away against a right hander, Bernie Williams can hit away against a right hander, even though he is Kurt Schilling. Schilling steps off. Last time Bernie Williams had a sacrifice, 1996. Williams has fly to center, struck out five out of 22 in this World Series. No balls, two strikes as Williams grabs at the bat in frustration. He's set up. Looked like Williams was trying to ground the ball to the right side. Two things can happen if that happens. Jeter goes to third, and it's tougher to double up Bernie Williams. The 4-6-3 or 3-6-3 double play, much more difficult than 6-4-3. Jeter, the lead runner at second. O'Neill, the trail runner at first. Nobody out. One to nothing Arizona top of the seventh the 0 2 to Bernie Williams 97 miles per hour as the wind starts to whip around here at bank one ballpark might be whipping around because of pitches like this by Schilling and Clemens three straight fastballs to Bernie Williams and if anybody is ever set up for that splitter it's Williams now. Eighty two pitches on the night to the right side race they get the middle man it's first and third one out can't turn two and the tying run is ninety feet away for New York fine job by Bernie Williams making contact to the right side of the infield Mark Grace going for the sure out and no return throw by Womack and now the Yankees have a runner on at third with less than two outs. First and third with one out and Tino Martinez will be the hitter. Damian Miller goes out to talk. The home plate umpire Steve Ripley comes out to break it up. There is action for Arizona in their bullpen. As Schilling tries to work out of his first jam of the night. One. 
with a one run lead the Diamondbacks of course in double play depth starting to rain here in Phoenix. Just starting to drizzle a bit here in the seventh inning. Runners at the corners, one out. Martinez with a base hit to right, and the Yankees have tied it. Williams holds it second, and it's two on with one out as Tino Martinez delivers to tie it 1 1. Martinez with a big hit. And Bernie Williams stopping at second base. With one out, you have got to make Batista throw you out. Martinez with a line drive base hit to right field, plus Batista catches the ball back on his heels. Watch. Back. You've got to try to go to third base on a ball like that. So while the Yankees get a big hit, Bernie Williams does not take a big base. He's at second. Martinez is at first. The wind blowing hot dog wrappers and napkins, everything around this field as Posada takes ball one. You have to make up your mind yourself. Watch Bernie Williams. Look at Willie Randolph, the third base coach. If Batista throws you out on that play, like O'Neill in the first inning. And it's a good base running play, and you tip your cap to the right fielder. Posada pops it up. Gonzalez is there. Two up. Tino Martinez, who has tied this game with a hit, tied game four with a hit. It left the park against Byung Hung Kim. And it was one of the tenth on a home run by Jeter. Tino Martinez quite possibly playing in his last game as a New York Yankee. Delivers here in the seventh inning. Now it's Shane Spencer who's 0 for 2 batting with two on two out. Kurt Schilling is scheduled to lead off in the bottom of the seventh inning. Now clearly. Bob Brindley will be pinch hitting for Schilling and as far as pinch hitters are concerned the Diamondbacks have an edge. They have an outstanding bench. You can see Greg Colbrin with a bat. Durazzo a left handed hitter. DeLucci a left handed hitter. Here's Spencer with two on two out. That pitch was up and Spencer hammered at it strike one. High fastball that Spencer misses. Usually when you foul a ball straight back like that, you've had a healthy cut. 88 pitches on the night. That was his total in game four. Two on, two out. Two strikes on Spencer. Spencer into right center field. That ball's well hit. Finley on the run to end the inning. Steve Finley covering a lot of ground in right center field to keep it tied 1 1. The Yankees get a run on three hits, leave two. They've tied the game. Tonight's game is being seen live around the world by U.S. servicemen and women thanks to the American Forces Radio and Television Service. All of America salutes you and appreciates what you do for our country. Now let's go to public address announcer Jeff Munn. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America with the playing of God Bless America. 
please welcome once again Jesse McGuire. The 2001 World Series on Fox, presented by Budweiser, is brought to you by Siemens. Siemens, global network of innovation. Please remember Radio Shack is a collection site for the September 11 fund, benefiting survivors, victims, families, and rescue personnel. Kurt Schilling will stay in the game. Take his swings against Roger Clemens. He has struck out twice and go back out and pitch in the eighth. I'm surprised at this move by Bob Brindley. 14 home runs by his pinch hitters this year, tied a major league record. The Giants also had 14 home runs. You're running out of outs. 90 pitches, two more than what Schilling threw his last time out. I guess you got to figure, Joe, that Kurt Schilling may have said something to Bob Brindley. About continuing in this ball game. Well, the Diamondbacks are not blessed with the same short relief that the Yankees have. They right. do have Randy Johnson available if he has enough lead time to get ready. Otherwise, you're looking at Swindell, yep. Kim, Morgan. And Bob Brenly and the Diamondbacks feel more confident with Schilling going back out. With his 90 pitches for the second time on three days rest, and they do digging into their bullpen after sending a pinch hitter to the plate. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's what uh, Brindley is figuring. You're thinking about Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson will be given the starter mentality. If, for instance, Brindley's planning on putting him out there in the ninth inning, they'll probably send him out there in the eighth. Giving plenty of time to warm up. On one and two, Schilling strikes out looking. Ten strikeouts for Roger Clemens. While we have gone on and on about Kurt Schilling, we talked about the need for Roger Clemens to continue to prove himself in these big games. He certainly did in game three. Joe Torre will tell you he did in game two at Yankee Stadium last year. In the World Series against the Mets, when he went eight innings, allowed no runs on two hits, struck out nine, but all the people took out of that game was the shattered bat throwing incident with Mike Piazza. But the Yankees down two games to none, turned to their 39 year old right hander in game three. He and Rivera combined on a two to one victory, and here is Clemens pitching in the seventh inning in a 1 1 game, matched up with Schilling. In game seven, he's 0 and 2 on Tony Womack. Splitter is still there for Clemens. With one out, 
Ball one to Womack. Council on deck, then the left handed hitting Gonzalez. We showed you Stanton getting loose for the Yankees in their bullpen. See the rain coming down a bit harder now. A one two pitch. Two and two. Obviously, if the rain gets too bad, that roof will start to close. A 2 2 delivery. Womack. Stays up there. So far, the roof is staying open. Here's a 2 2 to Tony Womack. To spoil it. Just so you know, if it starts to pour. It takes about five and a half minutes for the roof to close here at Bank One Ballpark. Right now, not raining hard enough to halt play, so they leave it open. And with that, the elements. Wind is as much a factor, not more so than the rain here at this point. Womack hops out of there. Womack is fly to center, struck out, grounded out. To the right side, base hit. That will be it for Roger Clemens. It appears that is all for the 39 year old right hander. With a speed threat at first, with Council and Gonzalez, a couple of left handed batters coming up. After 114 pitches here in game seven, a couple of slaps on the back, and the five time Cy Young Award winner is gone. Stanton will take over. Go ahead, run on. One out in the seventh for the Diamondbacks. Kurt Schilling gets through seven innings, and he will continue here in game seven. Roger Clemens gets through six and a third, allows seven hits. One run, leaves with a runner on. Womack, one out. Ten strikeouts for Clemens, and here's Mike Stanton. And as you suggested, Joe, this is a two-fold move made to combat the left-handed hitter and the fast runner at first base. So Stanton in for two reasons. Council, on the other hand, Handles left handed pitching very, very well. A 337 batter during the regular season against left handers. Stanton worked two innings here last night. One on, one out. And close but safe at first is Womack. That was close indeed. Womack back. One one in the bottom of the seventh. Go ahead run it first for Arizona one out. And Womack is not yet comfortable against the move of Mike Stanton. Base runners will tell you that with the right handed throwing first baseman you can take another half step because he's got farther to reach back left hander with the glove on the right hand he just plops it down. Strike one to Council, who was the National League Championship Series MVP for Arizona. But so far in this World Series is two out of 23 as Romero Mendoza gets loose for the Yankees in their bullpen.
breaking ball misses one ball one strike. In case you want to know Jorge Posada during the regular season threw out just over 23 percent of potential base dealers is only one for nine in the postseason. And Womack the runner at first is one out of three in the postseason trying to steal a base. Jorge with a lot of help however in Mike Stanton you can see how closely Stanton is holding Womack at first base. So it's the tandem of a good catcher and a pitcher with a good move. That often determines whether you throw the batter out or not, or the runner out or not. Runner is going late break, and Womack is out for the second out of the inning. Looked like a delayed steal. It did. That's why Posada double pumped. Didn't know where to, whether to go to first base or second. It appeared to be a delayed steal. Quick tag by Jeter. Womack did not break right away. Perhaps he was fooled by Stanton coming home with the ball. Stanton had thrown over there four times to drive Womack back. Big out here in the seventh. Now it's one ball, two strikes on Council. And he pops it up. Drop it! In foul territory, Martinez puts it away. Well, as you have said before, Tony Womack with not a great break. Jeter just got there in time. You know what it was? It was a hit and run play. It had to be. He's looking at the ball. Council swings through and he keeps going. He was the second out. Council made the final out. Let's go to the eighth. Our game summary is brought to you by Pepsi and after the first pitch from Kurt Schilling to Alfonso Soriano will show it to you. Soriano takes a strike a matchup of Schilling and Clemens. Schilling is through seven now pitching in the eighth Clemens got into the seventh relieved by Stanton. Tino Martinez tied the game in the seventh after Batista put Arizona on top with an RBI double in the bottom of the sixth. The last two World Series game sevens have gone to extra innings in 91 97 here in game seven 2001 it's one one in the eighth. More rain here in Phoenix as Soriano gets a piece to stay alive. Going down to the bullpen and now starting the long process of getting loose is Randy Johnson along with Miguel Batista the game five starter who pitched eight innings for Arizona Soriano stays up there Soriano is flying to right struck out Schilling has struck out eight allowed one run on only four hits. Soriano into deep left field at the wall Yankees on top two to one. The Yankees and Diamondbacks have played 66 innings including this half inning the Yankees have had the lead seven and a half of those 66 innings Soriano gives it to them again unbelievable now it's brocious and it's a strike over the outside corner something down Soriano knew it. All in two. And the Yankees with yet another reason to celebrate.
So it's two to one New York here in the top of the eighth inning and Brocious waits for an 0 1 pitch from Kurt Schilling. Ninety five miles per hour it's 0 and 2. That home run got Mariano Rivera up in the bullpen. He will be the pitcher in the bottom of the eighth inning. Soriano who won game four of the ALCS with a home run in the ninth against Sasaki as Brocious strikes out. Later would win game five of the World Series with a hit in the twelfth. This into right center field. The game winner. The first rookie in Major League Baseball history to end a postseason game with a walk off home run. And here in the eighth inning of game seven, Soriano on the 95th pitch of the night from Schilling goes deep to make it two to one New York. Now David Justice bats for Stanton. Kurt Schilling got ahead of Soriano 0 and 2. He fouled back a couple of pitches. And then on a ball just below the knees, coughed it out to left field. Either a splitter or a breaking ball. Have to assume it was a split finger fastball from Kurt Schilling. Something about mid shin high. Man. Splitter. Justice takes a strike and it's two and one. Justice made the start in game one against Kurt Schilling because of success in his career against this right hander. That's just foul. Justice struck out three times that night. And it was just the start of a frustrating World Series to this point for David Justice. I would imagine Randy Johnson continues to throw in case Paul O'Neill comes up in this inning. He's two hitters away with a home run by Soriano. With one out nobody on Justice grounds it up the middle for a base hit. Looked like Schilling may have gotten a piece of it as it went into center field. Watch the right hand of Kurt Schilling. Kurt reaching out for the ball. May have clipped the ring finger or picky. Terrific job by Kurt Schilling. Roger Clemens. Now the right hander will be called. A 103 pitch night and Schilling will leave on the short end of a two to one game here in game seven. Schilling now sitting and watching as he has gone in the eighth inning. Diamondbacks let Schilling back to lead off the bottom of the seventh. To go back out for the eighth and after getting out in front of Soriano 0 and 2. Soriano hit one into the seats and left as Miguel Batista takes over with one on one out. We express surprise that Schilling would lead off the bottom of the seventh inning. And when you consider the whole staff is ready for the Diamondbacks. That's the third. What a play by Williams. Out at second, and that's all the Diamondbacks can get. Two away. That's because the bobble was made by Craig Council after he stepped on the bag. Nicely done by Matt Williams. Watch the throw that's low, the catch, and then in coming across the bag, the bobble. So Justice is out. See, he made the play, and then in the transfer, bobbled the ball. So got the out. Well, O'Neill is coming up. 
And Bob Brenly is coming out. And Randy Johnson is coming in. Last night's starter, Randy Johnson, in the game for the Diamondbacks. When Bob Brenly went out to get Kurt Schilling in this eighth inning, here's what he had to say. Hold an effort, Haas. We're going to put Miguel on this guy right here. Get a fresh arm in here. Hell of an effort, big man. I love you, brother. You're my hero. You're my hero. Hey. That ain't going to beat us. We're going to get that back plus side. That ain't going to beat us, big man. Schilling had those words of encouragement as he exited the field. Then Batista took over, got it out. And now it's Randy Johnson, who has pitched 11 games in his career in relief. Throw to first, and Jeter was breaking towards second, able to get back to first. As he looked like he was running. With two outs, if Jeter gets a good jump off Randy Johnson, we talked about it last night, he will take off. Paul O'Neill has perhaps seen his last action, not perhaps, probably. There's Paul over there with his bat. But he's retired one way or the other. Lifted for the pinch hitter, Chuck Knobloch. Knobloch started in last night's game against Randy Johnson, was 0 for 3 with a walk. Knobloch down the left field line. It is a foul ball. And you can see Jeter limping around the bases. He is hurting, whether it's his foot, his ankle, yep. his calf, his hamstring, whatever it is. We saw it happen back in the fifth inning and he is bothered on that play coming across the bag on Craig Council but he is certainly limping trying to pull up there two out in the inning one ball one strike on Nablon. Block one out of 17 in this World Series, but as it has been for the Yankees, his one hit led off the 12th inning of Game Five, and Knobloch came around to score on the hit by Alfonso Soriano, whose home run has put the Yankees on top for the first time tonight here in this eighth inning. Two balls and a strike on Knobloch. Got to tell you, uh, Joe, it must be brought out that we express surprise when Schilling. Was not pinch hit for in the bottom of the seventh inning. Diamondbacks in regulation had nine outs to score a run, and you don't want to squander one ninth of them. And with Clemens out there, that's what you're doing. Coupled with the fact that in our opening tonight, we thought that if Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling were knocked out in the middle innings, then Brian Anderson. Miguel Batista would play a big role in the game. Well, these are the middle innings in a sense. Even though it's the late inning, Schilling pitched as though, I mean, the Diamondbacks have a very deep bullpen here in the eighth inning. Into right field off the bat of Knobloch. And that'll end the top of the eighth inning, which started with this. With the rain falling in Phoenix. Hopes falling in Phoenix. An 0-2 pitch. And Soriano, the rookie, puts the Yankees on top in game seven. Two to one. The 2001 World Series on Fox, presented by Budweiser, is brought to you by the Joy of Pepsi. By Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by the people of United Airlines. We are united. Bottom of the eighth inning and Chuck Knobloch stays in the game. He moves over to left field that switches Shane Spencer over to right. And Mariano Rivera takes over on the mound. The numbers this postseason 2 and 0 
five saves and an ERA of 0 0.61. When you have a guy like Mariano Rivera and his success throughout the season and postseason, it certainly makes your decisions very easy. We talked about the decisions of Bob Brindley, whether to reach, whether to yank Kurt Schilling for a pinch hitter to lead off the seventh inning of a tie ball game. He didn't do that. Soriano had the home run in the top of the eighth. Now Joe Torre with only one decision going to Rivera. See those career postseason numbers. And 19 of Rivera's 24 postseason saves have been for more than one inning. He takes over in the bottom of the eighth. Luis Gonzalez first up. Ball one up and in. Gonzalez, Williams, and Finley. Gonzalez 0 for 3 tonight. One ball one strike. Rivera after working in all three games at Yankee Stadium has had two days off. Two balls and a strike. He went two innings in game three. He went one inning in game four and two innings in game five. The 2 1. Two balls, two strikes. After missing with two cut fastballs inside, Gonzalez goes after the pitch out of the strike zone. The 2 2. That's out of play. Bob Brenly said after those three games at Yankee Stadium. All three one run losses and Rivera was involved in every one of them. He said his fantasy would be to come back here to Arizona and not only win this World Series obviously but to do it against Mariano Rivera. So many teams have tried. So many teams have failed. The 2 2 one out. Gonzalez 0 for 4 here in game 7. The only time Gonzalez made contact, he broke his bat. No contact here. Rivera, who was the World Series most valuable player in 1999, could very well be it again here in 2001 if the Yankees win. The Diamondbacks. Trying to rally, win game seven, win this World Series against one of the best postseason relievers ever. No balls, one strike on Matt Williams. Kurt Schilling still talking to himself after going seven and a third inning. He gave it all he had. 0 oh 2 on Matt Williams. Steve Finley waits to hit next. Lowest ERA all time in the postseason. Mariano Rivera at 0.70. In 51 appearances. With one out, nobody on. The 0-2 pitch, two out. You may have noticed Jorge Posada moving his mitt up. In the strike zone after he gave the signal. He stressed around the letters. And that's where he got it. Now with two out nobody on here is Steve Finley who's one for three. Ball one inside. Hit to right. 
And the tying run is on with two out here in the eighth. Finley, two out of four tonight. He has had a tremendous postseason. Best all around hitter for the Diamondbacks in this postseason, Steve Finley. Now the Diamondbacks have Danny Batista, who had a hit against Rivera. He hit it to right center field, and American League managers know this. Rivera is easier to hit from the right side. Right now, this is the guy the Diamondbacks want at the plate. Danny Batista, one on, two out, strike one. Batista, one for two tonight. And seven out of 11 in this World Series. Batista hit five home runs during the regular season. He has none in the postseason. Nothing in two. Down and out of the strike zone. One on, two out. Bautista strikes out, and Rivera struck out the side. Allowed a hit. The Diamondbacks strand their eighth runner of the night. We go to the ninth inning of game seven. Yankees bat. They lead it two to one. Randy Johnson goes back to the hill. He will deal with Bernie Williams, Tino Martinez, and Jorge Posada. Two to one Yankees, ninth inning of game seven. Williams 0 for 3 tonight. Ball one up and out of the strike zone. 90 miles per hour from Randy Johnson, who threw 104 pitches in game six last night. Mike Morgan and Byung Hun Kim are up. Neither one throwing right now is Williams. Takes a strike. And thinking about Kurt Schilling leading off the seventh inning, it must be pointed out that if Bob Grenley uses his pinch hitters for Kurt Schilling in the seventh, you're going to use your pinch hitters with no chance of facing Mariana Rivera. If Grenley then goes to his bullpen, he's dealing with the bullpen unlike any other of the six games because now in game seven you have starters in your bullpen and not guys that he's had problems with in his bullpen. One ball two strikes from Randy Johnson. And Williams flies one to shallow center. One out. What are the Yankees trying to do again here tonight? Longest streaks all time. Consecutive championships. The Yankees from 49 to 53 won five. From 36 to 39, they won four in a row. Oakland did it three times in a row, 72 to 74. And the Yankees are trying for their fourth in a row. 98, 99, 2000, 2001. Randy Johnson. Slider misses for ball one to Tino Martinez. How about Randy Johnson? 38 years old. Throws 104 pitches last night. Amazing. He warms up. He comes in, finishes off the eighth inning, and he's back out there for the ninth inning. One ball, one strike on Tino Martinez. The Diamondbacks in the bottom of this ninth will have the bottom of their order. Grace, Miller, and then the pitcher spot. One ball, two strikes on Tino Martinez, whose RBI hit back in the seventh inning tied it. Schilling avoided further damage, but could not avoid the bat of Alfonso Soriano on an 0-2 pitch leading off the eighth. He homered to left, and it's 2-1 New York.
to the left side. Womack circles it. Throws. Got it. Two out. That brings in Jorge Posada. A lot of people are starting to compare the lopsided scoring to the 1960 World Series something Tim that you talked about last night when in that series the Yankees outscored the Pirates 55 to 27 yet lost in seven games. Arizona has outscored the Yankees 35 to 14 in this World Series yet the Yankees are three defensive outs away from wrapping up their 27th World Championship. The 0 1. 0 and 2. Here's what you're talking about, Joe. Look at games 2, 3, and 6. The Yankees over the Pirates. And yet it was Bill Mazeroski's home run in game 7 that shook the baseball world. The 0 2. Posada stays up there. Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson the one two punch for Arizona giving the Yankees all they can handle. Posada strikes out to send this game seven into the bottom of the ninth last chance for the Diamondbacks they'll take on Rivera they trail by one. Bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Diamondbacks. Down two to one. Mark Grace first up against Mariano Rivera, who struck out the side in the eighth. Grace, two hits tonight. Ball one. Shane Spencer too deep in left field. Mark Grace would have to hit a ball twice to hit it to him. That's not block, I beg your pardon. Spencer in right. Into center field, a good start for Arizona. Grace with his third hit. Bob Brindley saying he had a feeling about Mark Grace tonight. Grace has a third of the hits. Look for Miller to be Bunny. David DeLucci runs for Grace. They had Colburn coming to the plate. He was in the on deck circle until Grace got on. Now they have Miller up to bunt. Strike one, I'm sure. Just as it is no picnic to try to swing and hit against Rivera, it's no fun to try to bunt against him either. That's exactly right. A lot of catchers have a tough time catching knuckleballs. Hitters have a tough time hitting knuckleballs. And hitters have a tough time bunting against Mariana Rivera. What's interesting is Greg Colbrin has come to the on deck circle, a right handed batter. With the Rubio Durazo, a terrific left handed batter on the bench. So Bob Brindley believes the right hander has the best chance. The bunt by Miller. Throw to second. In the center field. DeLucci will stay, and it's two on with nobody out. And Jeter can't get up. Joe, earlier in the game, we talked about pitchers throwing the bases. That they had a difficult time throwing because they can't throw anything straight. This ball backs up on Derek Jeter, 
and his left knee appears to be tangled in the legs of Delucci. Trying to stretch out for the tag play. You can see the throw backing up right field side and Jeter with the ankle and knee. He appears to be all right. But a scary moment for Derek Jeter. And now the Arizona Diamondbacks are possibly a hit away from tying it. And a well placed extra base hit away from winning it as Jay Bell now will walk to the plate again Colburn is called back and now the Yankees will be shortened up expecting another bunt. Jay Bell led the National League in bunts in 1990 with 39 sacrifices. He's one of the better bunters in the National League. He would want to bunt it down the third baseline to make Grocious field the ball. Two on, nobody out, and the bunt to Rivera throws to third, out. No other play, and it's first and second, one away. Rivera, cat-like, off the mound. Bell thinking about bunting it toward third. But as you can see, Rivera is so quick to third base that Grocious actually had a play at first had he come off the bag. Jay Bell's about halfway down the line. But Grocious content for one. And now that the lead runner is Damian Miller, he'll be lifted for Meadry Cummings. That's the tying run at second. The potential winning run at first is Jay Bell. It'll be Tony Womack at the plate, first and second, one out. Just like on Mark Grace, you shorten up in the opposite field. Chuck Knobloch for the Yankees in left field is too deep for Tony Womack right now. Ball one to Womack. Womack singled his last time up to chase Roger Clemens. Now he faces Rivera. Two on, one out. Two and oh. Two and one. Two and two. Squeezing every last drop out of this 2001 World Series. Diamondback. One game one. They won game two. The Yankees swept at home. Diamondbacks won last night. Yankees lead in game seven, two to one in the ninth. Two on, one out. And Womack in the right field to hit. Here comes Cummings. It's tied. Going to third is Bell. Tony Womack delivers. It's 2 2. Diamondbacks with late magic of their own. Now 
it's Craig Council with the infield in. Winning run 90 feet away. Strike one. The infield in and the outfield in. A sacrifice fly wins the game. Craig Council, who scored the winning run in game seven of the 97 World Series for Florida against Cleveland, trying to drive home the winning run in game seven against the Yankees. Hit by the pitch, and the bases are loaded. The reason that Rivera did not put Council on was because on deck was the best Diamondback hitter in Luis Gonzalez, their most valuable player. And here he is with a chance to win the World Series for the Diamondbacks. The chance of a lifetime for Luis Gonzalez. 2 2, bottom of the ninth, game seven of the World Series. Bases loaded, infield in, one out. Strike one. The one problem is Rivera throws inside the left handers, and left handers get a lot of broken bat hits in the shallow outfield. The shallow part of the outfield. That's the danger in bringing the infield in with a guy like Rivera on the mound. Floater, center field, the Diamondbacks are world champions.
in only their fourth year as a franchise the Arizona Diamondbacks with a fastest expansion team to get to the World Series they're the fastest to win it. Let's go down to the field in Jeannie's Alaska. Thank you Joe Buck. I'm with maybe the most popular guy in the Phoenix area right now. Take us through your final at bat. I was just trying to choke up. I knew he's going to come in. This is a dream come true. You dream about this situation as a little kid. And just to get up there and put the ball in play and get the draw, a winning run in, we can't believe it. This team will not give up. They had a great ball club over there, but our team was relentless. We kept coming back. Be honest, though. What was life like on the bench when Soriano hit one out? Well, you know what? Our team, we kept coming in. We believe in everybody in there. and We kept battling. And this, this is a, this, our fans were outstanding. This whole series was phenomenal. This is probably going to go down as one of the best World Series ever. Outstanding season for you, and congratulations on putting an end to their dynasty. Thank you. Big kiss from Matt Williams. Back to you, Joe. All right, Jeannie. A veteran team assembled to win now. And they do, thanks to this. Off the hands and into shallow left center. Gonzalez knew it. The Diamondbacks have dethroned the Yankees. They are world champions. In game five, Joe Torre had the infield at double play depth. A line drive caught by Alfonso Soriano saved the game. Tonight he elected to bring the infield in and lost. Let's go to Genie's Alaska. Promise before game seven, you said, give me the ball. We're going to win this thing. Ever in doubt out here, especially when Soriano got one on you. Well, uh, I didn't say how we'd win it, just that we'd win it. What a, what, what a fitting end of the season. This is just the way. Every time we had our backs to the wall, we came back and found a way. And what, a, what an unbelievable World Series. That's off the New York Yankees. There you go. Now, what about yourself? The thought process of staying in this game when you knew you had an at bat coming in the seventh inning. Take us through the conversation with Brenly. There wasn't. He asked me how I felt. I told him I felt fine. I felt strong all night long. I made some bad pitches that period. I just, the pitches Soriano hit out was a, a split that I, I could unless I bounced it. I couldn't get it much lower. And you know, uh, you know much you can do about that. It wasn't a bad pitch, but in that spot it was. And. You know, I, I felt good. I felt strong on that long, and there was no reason to come out of that game unless he thought I couldn't get it done. There's a rumor floating around here that you are the most valuable player. Has it made its way to you yet? No, this is, there's about eight guys that could get that award and then be deserving. This is the most uncry, unbelievable. Can you speak to Clement's performance tonight and what it took facing your master? Well, I didn't, I hadn't talked to him, but uh, I, I guess a dream come true. This was up against a guy who turned my career around and. I hope we gave the fans something fun to watch because it was intense. Speaking of those fans, they're screaming for you, so I'll let you go. Once Thank again, you, congratulations. Thanks, Joe? All right, Jeannie, congratulations to Kurt Schilling. He took the ball in game one. He took the ball in game four. He took the ball in game seven. Got into the eighth inning. Left the field. Down two to one. And who gets the victory out of the bullpen? Randy Johnson. Plenty more to come from Bank One Ballpark. The celebration will be on the field. Stay with us. The Diamondbacks win it 3-2 and in the series four games to three.